move ahead to uh, so many experiences, but the most harrowing um, Well, memory. of 248 rides, there's a lot of harrowing experiences, <laughs> but um, the one I remember the most is when the French writer got out ahead of Rio by so this is six in Spain. minutes. So this yes. is in Spain. Yes, it's it was. in Spain. Um, the French writer left early by That's six right. minutes. That's right. Yes. And they said they would make that up at the next vet check. Well, well the, actually, the next vet check was the finish line. No. Was the there next one more? vet check was, was one more. Okay, yeah. there was. Yes. Okay, thank you. And, That's um, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they didn't make it up. And so I knew if I... Uh, had to win to get um, the six minutes. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, and what happened at the third vet check was Rio had lost his shoe. And so the shoes were in the car and the car was a mile away. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I put on an easy boot and hoped that would stay on, but it didn't. Um, part way through, we caught up to the French writer and we were galloping along, and um, the um, Rio. I I think he overstrided, and um, stepped into the boot, and. It was hanging by the strap that hangs, that tightens. Yes. Yeah, and it was around his fetlock. So um, there were three Spanish guys that um, were observing the ride that happened to be there. And um, I, I said, help. And um, one of them went to his head <clears throat> the other one, I made um, cutting gestures for scissors, and he went to look for scissors <clears throat> because I knew I had to cut the boot off. Yes, and the French rider is leaving. Yeah, and she was out of sight, and so um, she had no sympathy for me. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway... Um, the third guy uh, was at my pack, and so I, um, the second guy that went to, for the scissors, um, he was taking too long, and I have a Leatherman tool, so I cut it with a knife, and um, I couldn't cut it with the scissors on the tool, and... Um, I hope I, I, I hoped I didn't cut him. Right. But um, I got it off, and I, I never carry two easy boots, but I did for that ride oh. <laughs> because of the weight, and um, so I um, said, okay, we're gonna weigh all these when we um, end. But um, they're used. So um, anyway, the, Fran the Spaniard, the third Spaniard, had my pack all done up 
when I was ready to go. So all I had to do was get on and go. go. And so she was still six minutes ahead. And um, I sent word to the shoer um, via Judith that um, I had to have new shoes or right, shoe right, going on. Right, right, right. But he said, if you've got six miles of lava rock, the two should be replaced. Mm. And so he told a story while he did it. And I knew there was no point in shutting him up <laughs> because... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he replaced two shoes. There yes. was a hold, so it wasn't like a gate and go. It no, was it just, was a hold. There was a hold at least, but it was, I believe, like 30 minutes. It was not a one-hour hold. Yes. And so um, I was six, still six minutes behind. And um, even, even though he put the shoes on quickly and he told a story while he was doing it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he got the shoes on and I was still six minutes behind. So um, I knew I wouldn't have to make it up if um, I won the ride. Right. So um, I, I went ahead and the Spanish um, were really good about saying six minutos cuatro minutos, tres minutos. Oh, nice. And how far ahead she was. And when we got to dos minutos, I let Rhea walk for a while. And um, then his head went up and his ears went up, and the French writer was right in front of us. Oh. So I trotted him up and pulled him back and let him walk with her pulling us. Exactly. Just yeah. drafting a yep. little bit. Conserve the energy. Yep. And when we got to the top. Yes, there was a climb. Yes. Six miles of lava. And um, so I was glad we replaced the shoes. Yes. And um, we had to go up um, six miles. And uh, we caught her. And then we um, drafted, and then when we got to the top, we passed her. And so... Um, I could just see, can't you, could you feel him giggling inside? Yes. Knowing that pony, it would just be... <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt that way. I'm sure you did. <laughs> there was a little chuckling going on behind the French horse. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. So we passed her, we went around the polo field, yes. and we won, yes. but um, we, uh, he, um, I was afraid he would colic after that, mm -hmm. and um, Nancy Elliott and um, Mitch was there, but no, not Mitch, um, who no. We? Judith walked him back, okay. and I think Sandy Schuler. Yes. Yes. And um, they took a really long time, and I was getting worried that right. he colicked. And uh, anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but he was, he came into the yard, ears up, looking perky, and they, sa they said he ate grass along the way, and that perked him up. And I found from Sweden it could perk him up really fast because in Sweden at the uh, fifth vet check, mm -hmm. um, he was um, not good mm -hmm. and metabolically. And um, he's, uh, the vet said he's at least a D, if not an F. And um, hmm. so he went and got Carrie Ridgeway, 
and um, Carrie was the head vet, and uh, I let eat, Rio eat grass while he was gone. Right. And um, yeah, so you were there, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I didn't forget my writer card at that vet check. <laughs> That's an inside joke for all yeah. of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, uh, so he's eating grass. Yes. He was eating grass, and Carrie came over and said, oh, he's at least an A. What are you talking about? And he made this vet feel so small. And um, the vet felt very chagrined, to put it mildly. Yes. And I said, sticking up for the vet, he was at least a D um, a few minutes ago. And he said, well, he's an A now. And um, so I went on and I found out later that horses eating grass will quickly come around if their um, jugular refill is slow. Interesting. He, yeah. He said it was at least a D and Carrie said it was an A. And um, I've talked to several vets after that, mm -hmm. and I said, could, have, could the jugular refill come back that fast? And um, the answer was yes. It's interesting. Yeah. Back east, they call it Dr. Green. Ah. Um, because back east, they get more rain in the summer. Ah. But depending on where the camp is, you know, it's yeah. mowed, so there isn't a lot of eat edible green yeah. grass but um it was always oh should we go over and get some dr green yeah um because it and on a high desert 55 um the vet commented and was in the that's kind of a spring ride and it was a wet winter so it was yeah. beautiful for flowers but also a lot of that trail side yeah grass so the horses were just plucking and the vet commented after the ride that he hadn't seen a experienced a group of horses with such good gut sounds all day long. Hmm. To your point, yeah. it's the grass. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it was good. Anyway. Um, so that was harrowing. Yeah. Um, the way it had to finish. It was, it was a nail biter. Yeah. Um, and um, Rick, my husband is chef to keep. He, team coach, uh, Maggie, had finished third bronze medal that year but he fought with the officials uh stridently to get those minutes sorted yes i know he was and he never yelled. yes yes he absolutely by the numbers yeah and there was always that sense of oh come on she won what do you know you got to get the numbers right. What, yeah. what do you worry about? She won. No. Got to get the numbers right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, that, that was that oh, was memorable. Oh, after. Oh, after. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the French gal, which was kind of interesting, because, again, this is 91. Yeah. Um, they always, they had a lit cigarette ready for their rider for mm -hmm. her coming in to a check. Yeah. And she would would smoke through the vet check, and then there was the crew that would jog down the trail. She'd drop the cigarette, and they'd pick it up. And we went, well, there's a different crew position than any of us from the United States are used to seeing yeah. is the, the uh, mandated cigarette management person. I remember her at the finish smoking a cigarette and having her little daughter climb all over her. And that little daughter has become a world-class writer. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was really good in France, but um, the daughter is better. Wow. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. I love that. Diagnosed it. And um, a lot of people go through several neurosurgeons mm -hmm. before they get the diagnosis sure. because it's rare. It's rare and it has uh, mocks or similar symptoms to other known, more yes. common 
yep. disorders. Yep. Well, I'm delighted that there is a name. You know, yeah. that's step one. And you've been accepted into a study. Well, the or... study's over. Okay, but, okay. But um, I have no cognitive deficiencies. That's uh, obvious. But I talk slower. Right. And that's good for teaching, but it's not good for interviews. Well, I was going to say for our interview, actually, um, the pacing's been lovely. Okay. Very good. So thank you again. Yeah. <laughs>